He was in the running for Danville mayor. Now he isn't, and he's pursuing legal action. Good evening. I'm Marley Capper. Jessica has a night off. Three people have their name in the hat for Danville mayor. Incumbent Ricky Williams Jr., Jackie Vinson, and Jacob Lane. Two of them are only in it now, and Lane is fighting to get back on the ballot. Jacob Lane was taken off the ballot for Danville's mayor after he was challenged. Mayor Ricky Williams Jr. claimed he did not have enough valid signatures. Mr. Williams was completely within his right to file an objection to my petitions. But Lane claims the objection wasn't handled properly by the Election Commission. There were several statutes that were violated by the Election Commission in the process of this entire complaint. Lane claims the first violation was the Open Meetings Act rights. He says the commission met on December 14th and he wasn't alerted. You can clearly see through my screenshots that I have, the agenda was not posted 48 hours prior to that. I had no knowledge they were meeting on the 14th. Lane says he was only told about a hearing on the 21st of December where he could present his case on why he should stay on the ballot. But to me, that doesn't make any sense because you're, you've already convicted someone. It's like going to court, finding someone guilty, and then allowing them after that fact to make their case. Lane says his second complaint was about William's objection. He claims it was not time stamped. It's got a date on it, but it doesn't have a time stamp on it, so we have no idea. Um, when that document was actually received and if it was received by the deadline that it was supposed to be received. Lane also says that when Williams filed complaints about specific signatures, he spelled voter names wrong, but the commission still took them off Lane's petition. Mr. Williams listed the wrong name. It's not their job to help Mr. Williams out by removing them. It's, it's, it, when he filed the objection, it was his job to get the names right. Lane says that even if part of the objection was correct, meaning that a signature was invalid, in his mind, the whole objection should be thrown out because of his claims against the election commission. We reached out to the election commissioner. She says Lane has every right to take the decision to court. We also reached out to Mayor Williams and have not heard back yet. Lane says he's waiting for a hearing date. We have an update for you on a missing woman. Search volunteers found an unresponsive woman in a field west of Atwood. Officers determined the woman was dead and identified her as 20-year-old Karen Fennessy, who was last seen Thursday night. An investigation is being conducted. Champaign County Crime Stoppers needs your help solving a bank robbery. It happened last month. Monday, December 19th at First Financial Bank on the corner of Neal Street and Hessel Boulevard. Police say this suspect showed a note that said they had a gun and demanded money. They got away with cash. Police say they might have left in a maroon SUV. The Springfield Fire Department is still trying to find two people after what the fire chief called the biggest fire since the 70s. Today, the city brought in an excavator and cadaver dogs to look through the rubble. The fire happened on Christmas Eve at the old Goodwill building at 11th Street and Enos Avenue. The building was abandoned, but the chief says there were people inside trying to find shelter from the winter storm. Several did escape the fire, but it's unclear how many people were in the building. Uh, they said that they thought that there were other people that were probably in other places within the building. Um, we've, we've located most of those people. Uh, we've, we've accounted for them. Uh, there's a couple people that we still would like to try and find. And Crews put out the fire before it spread to other houses. One broken fire suspension line caused significant damage to Paris High School this weekend. It flooded the school with water, damaging flooring, electrical systems, and other cables. School officials say they'll open on January 4th as normal, but athletic events will be rescheduled to different locations while the gym floor is repaired. There's no timeline for when that will be done. Champaign's driver service facilities will reopen tomorrow after closing for a burst pipe. It was closed today so crews could clean up. Standing water, the carpet is being dried, and nearby offices in Rantoul, Monticello, and Tuscola remained open. People who live in the Illini Tower on the U of I's campus say they're dealing with the aftermath of flooding. They say pipe burst over the holiday weekend and several floors were soaked and ceilings were leaking. We spoke with a student who wanted to remain anonymous but says they want the issue to be resolved. It was pretty serious um, from my perspective because um, on the, during the evening of the two incidents, mm -hmm. the fire alarm went off three times and it was like around 3 a.m. and 6 a.m. I would not call that ordinary. We called the Lion Eye Tower. They told us they don't have any comment at this time. A DeWitt County man says he was stuck in his apartment over the holidays. He lives on the fifth floor and uses a wheelchair. WCI3 Scarlett O'Hara spoke with him. Scarlett, the elevator was broken? 
Until late yesterday, Caleb Zook says he didn't have a way to get out of his building. The DeWitt County Housing Authority board chairman told me they submitted an emergency work order on Christmas Eve with the contract and maintenance company, and after that, it was out of their control. Because it's not right for handicapped people to be trapped inside a building for three days. There's no excuse for it. That's Jennifer Garrett. Her son, Caleb Zook, was one of those people who felt trapped. Caleb was stuck in his apartment on the fifth floor Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, and his 19th birthday. Zook uses a wheelchair, and he relies on the elevator to reach his fifth floor apartment unit. So when it was out of order for the weekend, he couldn't leave, even to see a doctor for frostbite on his finger and a burn on his leg. Kind of needed to go to the hospital for my finger and kind of needed to go for my leg and couldn't get out. And when I called maintenance about it, they said it wasn't their problem. Luckily, Garrett used to be an EMT, and she helped Zook treat his injuries from home. But she's still upset. She says it isn't the first round of elevator maintenance issues at Sheldon Nixon Manor. One of them has been out of order since the middle of summer when my 9-year-old and 16-year-old were stuck inside the elevator. Um, for over an hour. When the elevator first broke down, the DeWitt County Housing Authority posted a sign on the door that says the Nixon Manor elevators have been malfunctioning for months, but also said they exhausted every avenue to get them fixed quickly. They directed complaints to the Schindler Elevator Company, who wasn't able to solve the issue until Monday. I had to sit up there all weekend in excruciating, agonizing pain in my leg, and they, they just didn't care. He says there were others who also couldn't leave for the holidays. There is one other guy on my floor that needs a cane to walk. And I know he didn't take the stairs down because his knees shot. So he was stuck. But I mean, at least he had family that was able to get up the stairs. I got 80 year old grandparents. I didn't want them coming up. The board chairman says the past three years have been challenging. They've lost key staff members, and it's hard to find parts for the 40-year-old elevators. Plus, they've spent nearly half a million dollars in maintenance and modernization alone. Marley. Scarlett, thank you. Now, when temperatures dropped this past week, one woman noticed a big problem. Not everybody could bundle up and stay home, and some didn't have safe transportation options. So she decided to help. She posted online offering emergency Uber rides and prioritized those with disabilities or those who were traveling with children. One person took her up on the offer, but many others reached out wanting to help, too. It honestly offered me a sense of community. I have lived here less than a year, but seeing how people can actually come together, even if it was just one person who started it, it just became a domino effect. So honestly, warm and fuzzy feelings. She says all those people wanted to pitch in for other people's bus fares. She plans to offer the same service if the weather gets dangerous again. Now, with those colder temps and sun getting a little set, it's setting a little earlier than normal, some people might be experiencing seasonal affective disorder. You might know it as seasonal depression. We spoke with a mental health therapist who says seasonal affective disorder can happen to anyone, whether it's getting tired earlier in the day or not being able to sleep at night. And it has a lot to do with our body's circadian rhythm. She says it's important to know the symptoms. It can look like motivation struggles. It can look like um, maybe changing your eating patterns. Maybe it's just moving slower. And the feeling of, why do I have to do this? Why do I have to you know, keep going? Like I, There's just this general fatigue and exhaustion that's kind of plaguing us. And it doesn't happen to everybody, but it is very common. She says the best way to take care of seasonal depression is taking care of you making space for your mental health and listening to your body when it needs to rest. So to come, they're hitting the practice field for the first time since reaching Tampa. How Illini football is getting ready for Monday's game against Mississippi State. And the season of giving isn't over. You can help blood centers looking for donations. But first, Kevin Lighty joins us. Kevin, it was pretty nice today compared to what some of our folks here in Central Illinois have been experiencing. I mean, yeah, it was just a few days ago, 40 below zero wind chills. Uh, today, the sun came out a little bit. We made it to 26. Still below average, but tomorrow, everything changes. We'll talk about just how long we've been below freezing. Winds cranking up, back to the 50s, and a rainy end to the year. I'll show you that coming up. Live from your local news leader, Jessica Coons. Central Illinois' most accurate forecast with meteorologist Kevin Whitey and Brett Barron's on sports. You're watching WCIA 3 News at 10.